Welcome back to the channel guys. Thanks everyone again for the support, all the likes, all the shares, all the subscriptions, just brilliant. I love it. Um, thank you very much. And uh, we're going to bring you lots more videos, hopefully. So this is a really good one today, I think. Five essential pole rigs that you need to know for your commercial fishing. Um, they cover commercial silvers, they cover fishing maggots and stuff like that on the bottom, soft pellet fishing, hard pellet fishing, and catching F1 shallow in the spring. So these five rigs, learn how to tie them, um, there are a few little bits that are mega important, so let's head to the rig tying station now and get those rigs done and shown you. Right, first rig that I'm going to talk about is the Simple Bulk and Two Droppers rig. Now this is a rig that is a mainstay in my box. If you look at most of my rigs for fishing on the bottom, then they will feature a Bulk and Two Droppers. It's just something that uh, I've always used. I know that countless ang top anglers use. Um, Des Ship, for example, just about every rig that he's got in his box is a bulk and two droppers. It just works. It's the right compromise between uh, getting your bulk down fast so you've got the stability, but it's also because the two droppers and you know and the bulk, it just gives you that slow fall of the hook bait, which presents the bait well. Um, so let's get on with it. It's quite a simple rig to tie, obviously. Um, not too many components, but again, you know, we need to talk through it. Um, just a quick note on the bits that I'm going to use for all of these uh, different pole rigs. Uh, sharp scissors, always needed. Loop tire, we spoke about that in a recent video, it's a must. Obviously your floats, I use the, the uh, various ones from the dead ship range, really good. I use shot pliers, you don't have to but I do. Um, I think these are Reeve ones, yeah Reeve ones, uh, really really handy but I'm sure long needle nose pliers will help. Obviously different uh, silicons, this is like a Preston uh, mixed tub of silicon, all different uh, diameters there. Uh, and then obviously your main line. I use the RigMate Pro, you don't have to. Um, I just prefer it so I can shot all my rigs the same. So let's crack on. First job is to get the float on the line. Right, again, always like to work with a clean end. We've spoke about that before whenever we've done any sort of riggy bits. Through the eye, that Jura eye is just awesome. Now I like to put three rubbers on my line whenever I'm making pole rigs. So three rubbers. And if I'm doing like a batch of the same float, then I'll chop off, you know, 20 or so bits of silicon or whatever. And then then I've got enough then to get on with uh, tying my rig straight away. So I don't have to keep chopping bits of silicon every time I tie a rig. So let's get that on there. So, just as a point, a uh, matter of course, when it comes to silicon position, you see that I've got three on there. I don't know if you can see that nicely. I have one about, I don't know what that is, eight or nine mil, maybe 10 mil below the body of the float. I have one pretty much halfway, and then I have one at the end. And if you notice on that one, it's actually overlapping the uh, stem by a couple of mil. Um, I just feel that's a neat um, way of doing it. I think it stops tangles here. Um, when we talk about the night eye wire stems, which we will talk about in a bit, we use more silicon on that, but I'll tell you talk about that in a minute. So we'll get rid of that. Next job is to tie a loop on. Oh, when you're moving your silicon, just lube it up because you don't want to burn the line at this stage. And I'm going to tie a single figure of eight loop. This will be to attach my uh, hook length. So as we've done before, figure of eight loop, and I like the 12 mil loop, like that. Dead easy, job done. Next job, get it onto the pin at this end. Put that in there. Get some tension, tighten that up. I'm gonna trim this little bit of line here, nice. So we're set. Now's the time to put our shots on. So this is a 4 by 16 F1 maggot that I'm tying today. Move that up again, which is going to be for fishing on the bottom, either in windy conditions, in depths between four foot and sort of eight foot. Um, in normal conditions, then it will be for deeper water um, with a variety of baits, to be honest. That F1 maggot float is so versatile. You can use it for whatever you want, really. Um, because of the size of the float, 4x16, and because I actually like this float for smaller baits, so 
generally soft pellets, maggots, corn maybe. Um, I actually quite like light droppers um, because I want the bulk for the stability, but I want the light droppers to present a bait well. So I am actually going to use this with number 10 droppers. If I was using um, a carp pellet float, for example, with a thicker bristle where I'm definitely, definitely going to be fishing um, meat, hard pellets and I'd probably go for number nine droppers but because I'm, I'm I'm tying this rig up to fish with maggots I want number 10 droppers so just in the little number 10 jobby so first job is to pinch a shot on that where's my pliers gone out oh, of here on my lap so get that on there number 10 so that's on there right next to my hook length loop hopefully this is clear enough I then have one 15 centimetres above that. I think that's a nice sort of fall really for this. Like that. So I've got one on my hook length loop and I've got one 15 centimetres. If the water was really deep, if I was fishing probably eight foot plus, which some commercials are, then I would probably move this to 20 centimetres and then move my bulk higher up as well, so just to cover more water with a fall of my hook bait. The next step I do, I then use my another number 10 shot for this for this rig today as like my marker for my, where my bulk starts. And in this case, I'm gonna go 30 centimeters. So we'll get that on there. Nice and, I do like these pincers, I've gotta be honest. I think they're very handy bits of kit, especially for when you're doing this on the rig mate. So I've got that at 30 centimetres and that is my, the start of my bulk. So that's it for number 10s. Now we're going to move on to the number 8s. So take that lid off. <clears throat> and like I say, I like number 8s here because I, I think I want roughly 6 on the line, which adds up perfectly for the, this sort of 4B16 float. Now try and take a bit of care here and do this with a bit of love. Try and line your, uh, your shots up best you can. Again, Pliers, rig mate, will help you with this. So just like that, you see they're in perfect line. I want to put six on. I always put, I always, I'm a pretty rough estimate I am when I do my rigs. I don't have a shot in tube. I don't really, I have a, a rough idea of what they're taking and I, I sort of fine tune them on the bank, to be honest with you. That's what I like. A quick note on my rig line. It is AccuPower in 016 because this is going to be sort of a spring f one -E type rig uh, and I think that 016 allows me to use a variety of different hook lengths so as you can see it takes a bit of but take a bit you know a bit of love with this I have my, my shots probably it's probably a half a mil apart I guess it's not a mil but look at that, it's beautiful. All in a straight line. And that is it, that's the Balkan too. So, the way I like to do it, I like to have it the bulk at 30, 15, and then right on the hook length. And then obviously I'd have a, a, a probably a six inch hook length below that as well. And I just think that that, that for most commercial fisheries is like perfect. Um, just, just a really nice sort of rig, all around rig. You can use that for all different kinds of fishing. Uh, whether it's roach on the canal or commercial fishing or even on a river obviously you'd scale it up if you wanted to go on a river you could just put you uh, replace this with an olivet um, and that as a pole angler if you're new to pole fishing that rig there will stand you in great stead no matter what fishing you're going to do right the next rig in this little series of uh, rig tying instructionals is uh, a soft pellet rig um, expander pellet fishing is very popular um, and in the winter, springtime, then fishing it in sort of depths of, <clears throat> you know, in the deeper water, four, four to six foot, then you're going to want to, you know, use this rig really. Even if you're fishing across to islands, to be fair, where it's probably two or three foot deep, the same sort of strung bulk style is just a brilliant rig. Um, something I've used for a long, long time. And I believe Steve Ringer was the sort of main brainchild behind that. I know he used a strung bulk for a lot of years for a lot of different styles um, and it's something that I took on years ago and, and it's, it's worked ever since. Uh, the reason is this, the strung bulk it just gets you 
uh, bait down really quickly, which when you're fishing soft pellets is what you want. Um, it's, not a, it's not a bait like maggots where you're looking to catch their eye on the fall. With soft pellets, it's all about getting your bait to the bottom, setting a trap and waiting for a fish to pick up your bait. So you just want something stable that gets the hook bait down quick and presents it well. And the strung bulk just gives it, um, just seems to work well with the toe. It sort of help, uh, holds its own in the toe. Um, because of the large surface area of bulk, it seems to sit there in the toe nicely. Um, it might be a bit less, you know, it might be a bit more sensitive than just a, a solid bulk. Uh, being four inches away from the hook, uh, it just it just works for whatever reason. For that, we're going to use an F1 pellet float. This has got a night eye wire stem. The wire stem is quite important because, like I say, this is all about trap setting. So I'm tapping my micros in, I'm lowering my hook bait right on top of it, and then I want my rig to just sit there until I get a bite or a fish comes into the swim. Having this wire stem just means that the float is going to sit there and behave how I want it to uh, at the surface end. With a, especially with the help of a back shot and then down below that strung bolt's going to keep it rock solid there so the floats doing the job at the top end the bulk's doing the job at the bottom end so nice stable setup um, when it comes to silicon we'll get going but i'll talk you through this so when it comes to the silicon on this float um, because it's got night eye wire which is a bendy wire i actually like to put five bits of silicon on it um, just the problem is with this night eye, sometimes if you pull out of a fish, it's the recoil on it can be quite dramatic. And um, I just feel like this resolves any issue with maybe any sort of body damage on your floats or anything like that. This just seems to stop that. So it's something that my boss picked up on. He was doing it in the summer. We're using the car pellet float. Um, and it's something I've tried and it, it does work. So... I've got a nice thin silicon on there, which you need for the uh, night eye wire stem. Okay, so we've got five bits of silicon there. Again, I have that one just below, and I have them pretty spread out equally. And it just prevents, when the stem bends, it all bends together, rather than, if you've only had three, the gaps form, and it just doesn't seem, it just seems to put a lot of pressure on the float. Um, and that just seems to stop any sort of issues like that. So we'll just slide that up out of the way for the time being. Again, I've wetted that down, so no problem there. Again, figure of eight loop. That I've showed you in my five essential knots video. Look for the 12 mil. Nice. Pull. And let's get it on the pin and start the shotting bit because that is the interesting bit on this rig. Get some tension, tighten that up, trim off our excess, and we're good to go. So, I'm just going to move that up out of the way. So, this is all about stability, this rig. That's the only, that is the key to this. You want to be, like I say, bang on over your feed. So, everything needs to be down this end of the rig. There's no point having it high up, there's no need. It's all about getting it in that killing zone, so to speak. Um, and I will match the shot size to that. Um, because this is a 4x14, I'm going to use number 9s. If it was a 4x16, I'd use number 8s. Um, and even if it was a, a 4x12, I'd probably use 10s. Uh, I do like quite a few shot. So number 9s, obviously 0.05 of a gram on this shot conversion chart. So I'm looking at probably eight on there, which I think is about right. Um, you want a nice sort of neat-ish bulk. So let's get the number nines open. And obviously you've got to start somewhere. So I'll start with the one right by the hook length. Not just like that. And then I like them about two centimeters apart. That's what I like. Again, this sort of allows you to position them accurately. So I'm just looking at that there, and that is about two centimetres apart. So that just gives me something to work with. So we're accurate. And obviously, the beauty of this then is that 
for the next time, you will know that your shots were two centimetres apart, it worked well, you had a great result, and then you can just retie that rig. So that is the beauty of this little table here. It might seem elaborate, but it is, it is worth it. A bit of a misformed shot there. And one more number nine on there. And that is the strung bulk soft pellet rig done. So the shot size is based on the float size. Four by 14 in this case, eight number nines. Uh, if it was a four by 12, I'd use tens, probably get sort of eight twelves on there-ish, six to eight twelves, uh, ten, sorry. Uh, and then again, for uh, 4 by 16 I'd use number 8s. So there you go, that is the strung bulk soft pellet rig. I would use a, a 4 inch hook length below, uh, below this with something like a 16 SFL on there or a 16 GPM depending on the time of the year. Um, and that, that setup there is just perfect for soft pellet fishing. So the third rig, what we'll talk about, is a nice little silverfish setup. Um, to be fair, this is more of a um, commercial silverfish sort of style rig. Um, it's what you know I use a lot. Um, you might have seen my video I did at Shearsby Valley Lakes, for example, where I was on the uh, Sunset Pole with Sonia Bates and caught a load of silvers. And this sort of rig is perfect for that. Um, Chianti float, in my opinion, is the best choice ever for silverfish fishing, provided you can see it. It's got a cane bristle, which behaves better than anything else for silvers, in my opinion. When you're dotting it right down, which is so important for silvers, this float behaves better than anything else. You see those little dinks that you just strike at, and there's normally a quality fish at the other end. It's just They're just awesome. They just work brilliant. But like I say, because it's a solid cane tip, some light conditions, you can't see them, and I'd have to opt then for like an F1 maggot, or maybe even an F1 fine. Um, because they've got a hollow bristle that you can sometimes see better than this. So just bear that in mind. If, if it's good light and you can see it, then the Chianti is the number one choice in my opinion. Just a, just a brilliant, brilliant float. Just love them. Uh, and to be honest, the 4x12 and the 4x10 are, are probably my most commonly used sizes, I guess. So let's get on with it. Again, I'm going to use 016 because, let's be honest, on these commercials, you know, you are going to encounter odd car F1s, you know, if you're on a pleasure session, obviously you don't want to lose them in a match. You know, sometimes them F1s count in silverfish events, so you want to give yourself a best chance of landing them. Three rubbers this time. Um, that No need to have five on like we did for the uh, night eye. Again, the 12 mil loop that we keep talking about. Lovely. Get that on there. Now the fun can start. Right, this is a bit more complicated than previous rigs because we're going to be a bit more elaborate with the shotting. Um, the beauty of the Chianti is that it fishes on the drop very well and when you're fishing maggots or casters for silverfish then that is the best way to present them 80% of the time for sure. So let's move this up out of the way. This rig's really for depths of about Four to five foot would be where I'd use a four by twelve for silvers. Um, sometimes a four by ten can work in a bit less water than that, and again a four by six, four by fourteen can work again in a bit deeper water. So, but a four by twelve is the most common size on your, your average commercial, and it's all about a nice fall of the bait. So I'm going to start with number elevens this time. Nice small shots that will present the bait well. So I'm going to put a number eleven on the hook length like that so I've got a number 11 on the hook length 
So 10 centimetres above that, I'm going to put another one, another number 11. It's not quite right, just move it into position. And then above that, I'm going to put another number 11, 10 centimetres above that. Nice. So we've got one on the hook length, one ten centimetres and one at 20 centimetres. And that is the number 11. So I'm happy there. I've got three number 11s at the bottom of the rig that present the bait well. Now, the last thing I want is a million shot up the line. I do want it strung out, but I don't want it. Don't want a million shot up there because it causes tangles. There was a time when I was into all that and it just creates tangles. End of the day, we're, we're fishing for you know, potentially large weights of fish on a commercial fishery. And this is where everything gets a little bit tighter. So the next shot is at 30 centimetres. That's the number 10. Okay. And then bring this one down to 8 centimetres. And what I'm slowly doing is tapering the shot up. So you can see that one's a little bit closer. The next one's going to be at 6. So just there. Next one's going to be at four. And then the next one is going to be at two. Okay. So there, because it's um, a four by 12 float, I've got three number 11s down here. I've then got a number 10 at 30 centimetres. Eight centimetres above that, I've got another number 10. Six centimetres above that, I've got another number 10. Four centimetres above that, I've got another number 10. And then two centimetres above that, I've got another number 10. So I've got like a, a tapered shot in. If I was then, have to, if I had to put any trimmers on this or to help me dot it down, they would just go above this. And, they, and likewise, if it was a bigger float, um, the shot in here would remain the same up to the 50 centimetre mark but I just then carry that on. So that would be a two centimetre bulk, if that makes sense. So it'd be like a strung bulk here and then tapered below it. And I just believe that that presents the bait really well. It gives me that slow fall that I'm after, but it's not so faffy that I'm waiting forever for it to settle. This sort of gets the bait down to the business end and presents the bait well. So that to me is the perfect silverfish setup. Um, like I say, this can be as long as it needs to be to shot the float. So if, like I say, if it was four by 14, I'd just carry them on in two centimeter intervals, um, even a four by 16. But if I'm fishing for silvers on a commercial with casters or maggots, this is how I always shot my rigs. Okay, so this is a rig I've uh, caught a lot of fish on actually over the years. And uh, it's one that continues to throw up and it is all to do with hard pellet fishing. Fundamentally, this is really, um, hard pellet rig for snake lakes really um, where you're pinging four and six mil pellets across with a catapult and um, the fish can sort of move up and down in the water column in sort of three foot of water this four by ten carp pellet float with strung shot below it is the best way to present them i know a lot of top anglers use this i've used it for phew, a number of years now um, certainly when shears before shearsby valley uh, took all the islands out i had a great run i think i won five matches in a row one summer and it was all on this rig, um, fishing three foot. So a good meter off the island and I would loose feed four mil pellets with a six mil on the hook. Uh, and this rig was the number one because you could slap it over. Uh, even though he's fishing on the bottom, I'd slap it over, make a bit of noise. And just as the float had shot up, it had gone under and you'd have a carp on. I'm sure they were just watching the bait down. Um, so let's have, a, let's have a little start. So it's not as um, complicated or intense as the uh, silverfish sort of rig but it, it follows a similar sort of line. So <clears throat> it's night eye wire uh, stem this is, but I'm not gonna put five on like, uh, five rubbers on like I did with the uh, F1 pellet. The, the reason I'm not is I just don't want to have too much silicon on there because it's a light float with um, only a few shot, pull, you know, shotting it up. The, excess silicon might stop it from going through the surface tension so I don't really want that to be honest with you so four's enough still getting a nice strong result with four bits of silicon 
So there we go, we've got four bits of silicon on there. Again, one overlapping at the bottom. Tie our 12mm figure of eight. Nice and simple, nice and easy, like that. And we'll get it on the pin. Like that. Get some tension going. Job done. Okay, so we're fishing for carp. Let's not forget here. We're, we're, so we don't we want good presentation, but we don't want to be too faffy. Um, we're still fishing for a big weight. You know, we're fishing for, you know, it's rare that a commercial match isn't one with £100 now, even in the spring. Um, so although we want strung out shots, we don't want them to be too um, faffy, if that makes sense. So I'm going to use number 10s which I think presents the bait well. Bearing in mind we've probably got a six mil on the hook, so we need shots that correspond with the, with the weight of the bait as well. And I think a number 10 is the good compromise. Um, you might notice I'm always using shot and not stots. Um, if I'm just using a bulk, I will use stots. Um, but for this sort of fishing where I want, you know, proper layouts of my rigs, then it has to be shot for me. Just because stops move a little bit too easily for my liking when you're uh, fishing with strung out shots. So my first shot is on the hook length. Shot number two is at 10 centimetres. Shot number three is at 20 centimetres. Shot number four is at 30 centimetres. Now bearing in mind this rig is probably gonna be fished in three to four foot of water. And then I know that these floats take a bit of shot. So I think four tens and an 11 won't be far away. From what I need. And that number 11 there is gonna be at 40 centimeters. And if I was to trim up on the bank and I need to add any more shot, I'd just nuzzle it up against this one. Um, I don't really want the shot going any higher than that. But there you go, that is that is the, the hard pellet rig for snake lakes. That is just awesome. Um, number 10, number 10, number 10, number 10, 10 centimetres apart. The final number 11, just to, shut, just to uh, dot my float down, is up here. Um, that could be a 10 or whatever. Just to, It might even be a 9 to get your shot in right. But I don't really want any more than, than five shot placements on the rig. This one can be one or two or three shots, but below that I really want them sort of four like that and that to me you, like I say on snake lakes when you're pinging an odd pellet across maybe tapping a few of the pot hard pellets this is this little rig here is perfect so that's the hard pellet rig this can um, obviously be used up against islands it can be used in the margins anywhere you're fishing sort of hard pellets uh, this will work really well so there you go that's the uh, snake lake hard pellet rig a must in any angler's box Right, so the last rig in this little top five rigs is the little springtime F1 shallow rig. Um, reason I say springtime, it can, it can work year round, don't get me wrong, but when the fish are feeding in sort of 18 inch to two and a half foot, then this little rig comes into play. Um, in the summer, right, it's all about fishing super shallow, little bulk, two or a three inch hook length, little dibber, and getting everything as tight as possible. But in the springtime, you need to be fishing through the water more. You might be fishing maggots, casters, small pellets, and you just need a bit of fall and a bit of a nice presentation to fall them F1s. Uh, the best float by a mile is this little F1 shallow. Um, this little diamond shape just works so well. It's got a carbon stem, a little 1.5 bristle so you can see it, the Jura eye, but fundamentally it's a lovely little diamond sort of body. Just, just a great sort of pattern of float this is. The second thing that the eagle eye among you might have mentioned, might have spotted, is the addition of stots. Now, there's a good reason for this, um, and it comes to moving the uh, the shots, because there's, there'll be times in the match where you want them shotted up, like bulked up, um, and then there'll be times when you want them spread out. And I just like, I just prefer the, the versatility of stots here because um, it allows me to move the shots about as I see fit, really. Uh, so I have some a pattern that I, I start with, but again, 
depending on how the fish are feeding, it might be that I need to, to bulk them all up and I just think the stocks work better for that. I might have to move them a bit during the match, but I'd rather have the stocks on the line for this. Again, my main line is 016. Uh, AccuPower, yet again, all these rigs have been tied on that. Um, I just want a bit of strength and durability, really. I'm not, I'm not fussed about going any lighter than that. And this sort of strung out F1 rig for shallow fishing is something that has caught me so many, even years ago, I'm talking 10, 12 years ago, when, you know, the, there was a few of us who were getting really good results fishing for these fish shallow before it was really popular. And this rig used to come in to my come out all the time, even though the floats and that have changed. But fishing that a little bit deeper when everyone else is fishing 10 inches deep um, really worked well for me. And, that, you know, even when I won the like Natural Baits Festival at Western Pools a few years ago, caught loads of fish at two and three foot deep on this, this rig. So, um, you know, even when the weights are high in the summer, I always have a little rig like this set up because it's almost like a searcher. You, you, you're finding where the fish are with this. So. That's sort of uh, where I am with it. Just a great, great little rig. Interestingly, when it comes to hook lengths, um, I am a fan of three inch for F1s, uh, and I'm also a fan of two inch. But again, that depends on the depth and the situation. If it's the height of summer when I'm fishing shallow, 10 inches or less, which can often happen, then you've got to use a two inch, in my opinion, to get the hook to get the shots in the right place to be in relation to the rig. If you had a four inch hook length and you're only fishing 10 inches deep, the bulk would be too high and the hook bait would be wafting around. The two inch hook length is to get the, the bulk below centre of the rig, if that makes sense. But for this, because I'm fishing 18 inches to sort of three foot deep with this rig, three inch hook length absolutely fine. You could even use a four inch and have no problems at all, but I have all my F1 rigs tied at three inches. So we'll move that up out of the way. Say so yeah, about 60 centimetres. And again, this is just a simple, simple rig. So we're gonna go for four. We're gonna go for five number eleven stops. And the beauty of these is obviously they move so easily, so I can pinch them on in the same place and move them about. So that first one's gonna go on the hook length, like that. The next one's going to be 10 centimetres. Just like the hard pellet rig, this is what we're looking at to start with. Now this is, like I say, this is, I class this as like a searching rig. Maybe that this is the one that you catch most of your fish on. It may not be, but you've always got it in your armoury. And in this day and age, when we're all setting rigs up at home and leaving them on our F1 kits, then having this in your armory is uh, just a massive edge. So as you can see there, I've got number 11 stops at 10 centimetre intervals, and then my float here. Um, I can tighten them up so that it's you know, half that distance. Um, tends to be the shallower I go, the, the tighter I fish the shots, if that makes sense. If I'm fishing three foot, I'll have them quite well spread. If I'm fishing shallower, I'll tighten them up because obviously you're trying to account for the fish moving about and all that kind of stuff. So just remember when you're shallow fishing, the, 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 the swirls and stuff that happen when you're fishing in the margin or against an island happens when you're shallow fishing. You just can't see it. So you need a bit of stability. But that rig there, 4B8 F1 shallow, I never go heavier than that. I don't see the need. Um, even if I'm fishing a bulk, if I bulk that down, I'd still use that same size float. So it's incredibly versatile. Interestingly, I set them all up like this and then bulk them up on the day. Um, and then I don't have to have a million rigs tied up in my box. So there you go. Little springtime F1 shallow rig. Uh, works well in the autumn as well. Those last few days when you're going to catch an odd fish shallow, especially late in the session, it can work really well. So I always have this little beauty set up whenever there's F1s kicking about and you'll catch loads on it. <laughs>